Good morning, church. It looks different in here. And it will be different in here. And so, as we gather, we acknowledge our worship this day takes place on the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Métis peoples, and the territorial lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations. Here on this sacred ground, Creator's beloved have worshipped, worked, played, and lived in relationship with Creator since time immemorial. Today, some have come from the East. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> Logistics have let us down. Some have come from the east. And some have come from the west. And some have come from the south. Again. All have been called to the north. That we might worship as one. May these lights shine hope into the dark history we can no longer suppress. May they bear light on a way forward which speaks truth to power and is rooted in Christ's love. May these beacons of light of God's justice compel us to act in ways that address our wrongdoings and facilitate necessary changes that honor, respect, and reconcile all of God's creation. And as we worship today, may we hear afresh God's call to justice. Christ's call to love. And Spirit's call to unity as we worship on this World Communion Sunday with people from all corners of Mother Earth. May it be so. And so I warmly welcome the new musical director from Hillcrest United Church, Linda Morrow, who will welcome us into our worship space with her musical ministry.
Thank you, Linda. Well, good morning and welcome. I'm Reverend Sue Cowan, the minister, lead minister here at St. John's. And it is good to welcome folks from Hillcrest and St. Andrews, my colleagues Ross and Ken, who are sharing in this worship leadership today. Today, Christians will gather in huge cathedrals and open country churches, in mud-thatched huts and lean-tos, in people's homes and some even in secret, to participate in World Communion Feast with people of faith from across the globe. Today, the bread of life may be represented by a rice cake, a piece of naan, or a tamale. And the cup of blessing might be wine, juice, even grapes. As I said, our church looks a little different this morning. We had a concert last night. And since we are all venturing into newness in our congregations, with the transition team with St. Andrews and St. John's, pondering what an amalgamation might look like, and the folks at Hillcrest pondering what their new ministry will look like with Ken. We're going to do some new things this morning and lean into what God is asking us to do and be. As we gather here, throughout the globe. Invited by the one who promises abundant life, he calls us to serve as his disciples, proclaiming the gospel to a hurting world. And so in that light, that hope, in Christ's love and presence, we are welcomed this day. I invite Ross to share responsively our call to worship. Please join in the bold printed words. Come, let us be God's community. Come with love. Come with curiosity. We are one body, one planet, one church. Come with hope. As we gather with the bread and the cup, we are united with the bonds we share with one another as a family across the earth. Come, let us worship. The hymn, We Are One, found at Voices United 402.
And you may be seated, and let's join together in prayer. Gracious Creator God, even as the bombs explode through the night, even as the cries of injustice linger in the morning, even as the hustle of busyness rumbles through the day, quiet our hearts. Still our thoughts, join us in our worship. Remember us in your mercy as we encounter you through the proclamation of your good news in story and in song and through the hospitality of your gracious table. Welcome us again, O God, one in three, creator, redeemer, and holy guide. Amen. And so I'm going to share a story. So I invite our to come on over. And it will be, all the pictures will be up there, so don't worry about straining to see where you're at. Come on. It is called God's Dream. Do you dream? Yeah, I dream too. I wonder what God dreams. Dear child of God, what do you dream about in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows? Reaching across the sky? Yeah. yeah. Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires? Or about being treated like a full person? No matter how young you might be. Do you know what God dreams about? If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I am sure, dear child, that you will find out. Let's close our eyes and open our hearts. And then let's open our eyes up so we can see the rest of the pictures. God dreams about people sharing. Sounds good to me. Do you like to share, Luke? Yeah. yeah. God dreams about people caring. Do you care? Yeah, that's kind of, it always makes us feel good to care for others. God dreams that we can reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with another's hearts. Do you like to play games and laugh? Yeah, just like God. And, but God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. Dear child of God, it does happen that we get angry and hurt one another. Soon we start to feel sad and so very alone. Sometimes we all feel sad and angry and alone. Sometimes we cry and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears and God's tears too. Each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole. God dreams that every one of us will see that we are brothers and sisters. Yes, even you and me. 
Even we have different mommies and daddies or have diff- or come from different faraway lands. Even if we speak different languages or have different ways of talking to God. Even if we have different eyes or different skin. Even if you are taller and I am smaller, even if your nose is little and mine is large, dear child of God, do you know how to make God's dreams come true? It really is quite easy. What do you think? How do you think it might? What's easy for us to do to make God's dreams come true? It's as easy as sharing and loving and caring, easy as holding and playing and laughing, as easy as knowing we are family because we are all God's children. Will you help God's dreams come true? Let me tell you a secret. God smiles like a rainbow when you do. Amen. Now you can head back to the coloring space, or we invite you that when we are doing some of our activities, we want to hear your voices too. So if an adult wants to help you with your ideas so we can work together, that would be great too. Our lesson today is from the first letter of Paul to the Church of Corinth. Soon after leaving Corinth, Paul hears disturbing reports about the young Corinthian church and its struggles. Many are rooted in the people's unwillingness to change. Their pride, their egos, their steadfast belief that how they have always done things must continue. Many of the problems and questions facing the Corinthian church are ones we wrestle with today. There are still divisions, poor stewarding of gifts, folk who want to wield power over the church. There are still ones who want only their favorite hymns to be sung or their understandings to the Bible to be preached. The first letter to the Corinthians very well could have been written to the church today, and we would do well to hear Paul's warnings and look inwards to ourselves. The beauty of 1 Corinthians is that Paul's teaching and corrections bring our focus back to where it should be, on Jesus and reminds us that self-giving love, as embodied by Jesus, is the answer to many of our current challenges. Reading from Eric Peterson's translation, The Message, 1 Corinthians, verse 12. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, and they all originate in God's spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, yet they originate in God's spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, yet God is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the spirit and to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful, and all of these gifts have a common origin, yet are handed out one by one by the one Spirit of God, who decides who gets what 
and when. And so, folks, there are leaves in the slots by the hymn books. There are leaves on tables. There are leaves in the choir loft, but there's also extra pieces of paper. Everybody needs to have something to write on and a pen or a pencil to write with. And there are pens and pencils in there as well. So we heard a story about God's dreams and that everyone has gifts. And that's what Paul tells us in his letter to the church, Corinth. So close your eyes right now and breathe out and breathe in and think about the gifts that God has blessed you with. Special talents God has given you. And then, on your leaf or on a piece of paper, whatever you're going, chose to write on, put number one, and share what gifts you have and how you might use them to point others to God. Maybe you're gifted with teaching, or maybe you're gifted with visiting, or gifted to share prayer, or gifted... There's so many gifts that God has given us. What has God given you and how might you share it with others? And I'm not going to play Jeopardy music or anything cute. That would be fun. And as you continue to ponder that, Caroline will share the second part of our scripture. Paul's letter continues. You can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, but no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It's exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to independently call our own shots. But then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the final say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized. Each of us is now a part of his resurrection body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain where we all come to drink. The old labels we once used to identify ourselves, labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free, 
are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but, but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If Foote said, I am not elegant like hand embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to this body. Would that make it so? If ear said, I am not beautiful like eye, transparent and expressive. I don't deserve a place on the head. Would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where God wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts, each its proper size and in its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you, or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, Every, uh, every other part enters into the exuberance. Paul calls us to see that all of us are parts of Christ's body. Important parts. So close your eyes again. And you, dear child of God, know that you are so loved. And you are a wonderful part of Christ's body. Fully seen, fully heard, fully known by God. And so are all the people around you. And all who are gathered throughout the planet, many in worship this day. So open your eyes and look around. And what do you see? Many people with many gifts that are different than yours. And these gifts help us all to thrive and flourish. So think and put on your leaf or on your piece of paper number two. What additional gifts do you think your church needs to thrive and flourish. What additional gifts does your church need to thrive and flourish?
And as you ponder, what, where might these gifts come from? Where they might be found? Chapter 12 of Paul's letter concludes. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of the, as part of his body does your part mean anything. You're familiar with some of the parts that God has formed in Christ's church, which is his body. Apostles, or leaders. Prophets, the folks who help us see God's vision. Teachers, we have many teachers in our midst, who help us ponder God's word. And if there's teachers, there's students grappling with what they've heard. And learned. There are miracle workers and healers. This community is filled with people who have been nurses, doctors, caregivers, many who are caring for people now. Helpers, the ones who set up and clean up thankless jobs, who tend to the property and the finances. There are organizers, ones who plan, make sure events happen. And there's ones who pray and speak in many languages, the language of justice, of reconciliation, of Christ's peace, and God's love for all creation. And all together, friend and stranger, neighbor and enemy, we work that God's will might be done and God's dream might be lived. It's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's church is a complete body and not a gigantic, unidimensional part. Each of us has a role to play. Each of us is accountable to the other, and each of us has a responsibility to the whole. And yet, some of you keep completing, competing for so-called important parts, or believe some parts hold more value than others. But in God's eyes, they don't. We all have a part to play. So now on your leaf or your piece of paper, write number three. And what do you believe God's dream is for the United Church in Halton Hills? What do you believe God's dream is for the United Church? in Halton Hills. What do you believe God's dream is for the United Church in Halton Hills? And then also write down your thoughts about how that might happen and what that might look like. Be bold, be daring, be courageous. That's what the United Church is saying we are trying to be and live into. And as we do this, listen as Paul offers us all a better way, Christ's way. In chapter 13 of his letter, a passage often shared at weddings and funerals and days like today, when we gather as church throughout the globe, reading once more from the message, no matter what I say, 
what I believe and what I do. I am, says Paul, we are bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than itself. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love does not strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first. Love does not fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel. Rather, love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth puffs up, puts up with everything and anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps on going to the end. Love never dies. And it won't be long, says Paul, before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. And we'll see it all then, See it all as clearly as God sees it and sees us, knowing God directly just as we are known. But for now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us. Trust steadily in God. Hope unswervingly. Love extravagantly. And the best of all of these, the greatest of them all, the one that will ground us in the days to come and in our ministries individually and collectively is love. May it be so. Amen and amen. And so I invite people to pass their leaves, their pieces of paper, towards the center aisle. Some baskets, choir, you can have one. Collect them up. We're going to make a tree this week to anybody Pass these back and fill up the baskets with your leaves, your thoughts, your ideas. And together we will make God's dream. And so uh, we know that weekly announcements have been shared electronically or delivered. The co-chairs of the St. John's Church Council asked that I would remind people and uh, announce that on their behalf that there will be a congregational meeting at St. John's next Sunday. They know it's Thanksgiving. However, um, it's about the parking lot and paving it, and if a decision's made, actually some work might get done before the snow flies. And that is their hope, that one way or another we will know. As folks entered into the sanctuary this morning, there were plates designated as St. John, St. Andrew's Hillcrest, and so we hope that you saw those. They will still be there at the end of worship, so do not worry if you miss that. And so I would ask that we just give our praise to God right now as we dedicate the offerings that have been made this week, our talents, our time, all the hours that have been spent, all the prayers that have been offered, everything we have done to proclaim God's goodness, Christ's love, Spirit's call to justice. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and holy God, 
Accept all we offer this day and this week. Our checks, our cash, our e-transfers, our par, our faltering steps, our brokenness, and our leftovers. Our hope, our risking, our faithful actions, our lives. Bless and transform all that we bring and share and all that we hold back. That new life may be found, hope may be infectious, and your love may be proclaimed in each community of faith. At the Halton Hills community and in the world beyond us. In the name of Jesus, the Christ, we pray. Amen. And so we prepare ourselves for communion. As we share responsibly preparation moment, God prepares a banquet table for us and calls us to feast together. Compassion, love, and grace are poured like fine wine. So let us stand as we are able and sing together, one bread, one body. Voices United, 467.
Deeply, we hunger for fulfillment, and you touch our hunger and fill us. You are our bread and our sustenance in every time and season. Deeply, we thirst for communion with you, and you invite us to drink. You are sweetness of life. You are the fullness of life. You are life itself. Deeply, we desire for what is true and what endures. And it is you alone who is truth, you alone who is genuine. It is you alone who was, who is, and who shall be. The great I am, you are our hunger filled. You are our thirst quenched. You are our desire fulfilled. So it is, you are God now and forever. We give you our praise. For this is the meal lovingly set, where bread and wine for bodily nourishment and spiritual hunger are given and received. This is food for sinners and saints, rich and poor, weak and strong. It is offered as a blessing for the proud and the humble, the lost and wise, the bold and meek. This is God's grace-filled meal, lovingly set. And you, you are welcome.
Therefore, beloved of God, I call you to give thanks this day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our calling and greatest joy to give thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and sustainer of heaven and earth. You spoke, and at your word all things took shape and came into being, the sun and moon and stars, the sky and earth and waters, and all they contain. As your spirit moved over creation, bringing out order out of chaos, so all creation worked together and was called by you good. From the elements of the earth, you created us as unique and distinct people, yet all in your holy image. You breathed life into us and called us to love and serve you and to live with you and one another in covenant and community. But we turn away from you, and we have tried to live apart from you and one another, yet you never turn from us. Through the prophets, through encounters like Moses, you call us back to you and to your ways. Through the one who called your beloved son the way, the truth, and life, who was born of human flesh, you revealed the full extent of your grace and love. Again and again, you continue to welcome us, receive us, and invite us into relationship with you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with folk from every time and place to proclaim as one voice your glory in our unending hymn. Holy are all who you name and claim as your beloved. Blessed are all who seek to follow the way of your Son, walking this earth, thinking globally this day. You are feeding the hungry, calling the lost, seeing the forgotten, touching those in need of healing, bringing about peace, in places of war, teaching those who sought out wisdom and loving all. He showed your kingdom in your world, and we who are many are made one in him. In breaking bread and sharing wine with your people here and all places, we recall the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. Holy One, pour out your Spirit upon us and upon these offerings of bread and wine. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom where peace and justice are realized so that with all your people we share the banquet you have promised and provided. As we eat and drink, we feel the wind of your spirit in our hair, the fire of your spirit in our bellies, and the love of your spirit in our hearts. As we lift our prayers of concern to you, may we trust in your abiding presence and find peace in this knowledge. And as we offer our praise and thanksgiving for all of our blessings, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. 
May our thanks through our words and in our actions and our advocacy, our work and our witness, our lives and the love we share proclaim you as we follow the way of Jesus. Today we offer the prayers of our hearts in silence, O Holy One, for ourselves, loved ones, our communities, our world. May the presence of your spirit, O God, make this meal an occasion of transformation for all who gather this day from east and west and north and south, from every corner of this, your amazing world. Bless us, bless your church, bless this world through us. This we humbly pray together by sharing a paraphrase of the prayer Jesus taught saying, God within us, God beyond us, God among us. May the mystery always be named and known among all peoples and in all times. May creation give way to the rule of love and the power of life. Satisfy our hunger and grant us a hunger to see the world fed. Restore to right relationship with you, with creation, with others, with ourselves. Strengthen us to reject all that would lead us away from you. Come to us when we choose death over life. Give us courage to follow your call in this moment. For in your love we find the only power, the only home, the only honor we will ever need in this life and the life to come. Amen. On the last night of Jesus' earthly life, he shared a meal with his dearest friends. Taking bread, he blessed it, broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you, and each time you break bread, remember me. And on that same night, Jesus took the wine of the region, blessed it, poured it, shared it, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, my life poured out for you. And as you drink from this cup, remember me. So my friends, the choir will not be moving. You will be served, and it will be passed. Folks in the cafe, coffee house setting, juice will come around, but there's crackers, gluten-free, everything's gluten-free. So just serve each other. People that are in the straight pews will do a reverse of what we normally do, which is come forward down the center aisle. You will go down the center aisle, and Ross and Ken will serve you communion and then return to your seats by the side aisles. And if just follow the masses and you will be blessed and we will be fed. And as we are, there will be music and people are invited to sing along as you feel moved. The hymns as people move to the spaces, as people serve each other. Let us commune together. And so all is ready. All are welcome. Let us taste and see God's goodness as we commune with one another and with all of our siblings in Christ throughout the globe this day.
for you in love. together our prayer following communion ever loving and ever present God you have refreshed us at your table thank you may the sharing of this sacred meal with people of every nation remain always in our hearts and weave us together as one body one people strengthen our faith that we might bring your kingdom near through our love for one another, and send us out into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of your Spirit working in us, around us, and through us. Amen. You are all invited to head downstairs after the worship is finished, either through the back underneath the sanctuary and out to the hall, or there is an elevator and stairs there. There are gender-neutral bathrooms here, and also downstairs there's men's and women. So we hope you will join us, and we will make sure that Hillcrest and St. Andrews receive um, pictures of or experiences of the tree that we have created together where we have dreamed God's dreams this day. And so let us rise as we are able, as we sing our closing hymn, Deep in Our Hearts, More Voices 154. beloved of God, let us go. Let us go daringly, boldly, courageously to proclaim the gospel. Let us go united in this community and beyond in our works. G-Force 3. Our works as united for hospice. Our works as a church, God's church in this place called home. And so let us commission one another. God called us this day to be one with the world and with each other. Even as dear ones come and go from us, we are one. Even as we are one. 
with gratitude for all we have shared this day. With gratitude for the one whose dreams are lived in and through us. And trusting in the one who makes us one to guide our steps, our actions, our love. Go in peace.
This is the